the, the easiest approximation that we can use. And then we introduce the, the interaction and compare the, the, spec, the spectra that we obtain later. Okay, the Turbo Davidson use the Casida Davidson algorithm that you represented this morning. And uh, the okay, no, go, go on. Right. This is the 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 Turbo Davidson uh, the Davidson Casida equation that you represent this morning. And first of all, this is the in red is the interaction term. So first of all, we neglect this part to compute the, the spectra. Okay. In the independent particle approximation, this is the simplest approximation that you can use. The energy of the excitation is uh, is the difference between eigenvalues from the uh, virtual uh, state uh, and the uh, occupied state. And the uh, intensity of the excitation is the transition probability. The, this is uh, presented here in, uh, in the middle of the slide. Okay, uh, first of all, we have to start from the ground state. So we, we have to compute the, the ground state uh, for, uh, for our molecule. In this example, we compute the spectra of benzene. Okay, this here you can see the, the PW input, but I, I think in this week, in the last week, you you now able to, to run the PW. So, move on the on the on the terminal to example one here you can see the pw input this is uh, to compute the the ground state turbo davidson input the to, to run turbo davidson and solve the linear response Turbo spectrum input. This is the post processing uh, uh, compute to, to, to compute the, the spectrum in the final. And also, you have here the, the plot script to, to plot the, the spectrum with, uh, uh, with new plot. Now we can check. The, the input of PW. Okay, here you can see the atomic position for the benzene. Uh, I think you uh, now know everything uh, about uh, this type of input. Here you can see the number of bands that compute. The Turbo Davidson needs uh, some virtual. Yeah virtual states in different with the turbulences that don't need, don't need the, the virtual, uh, the virtual uh, states. So now compute on uh, HPC um, in remote, run the in remote uh, the, this, this uh, the PW in remote, so remote MPRI, and we run pw dot x minus sorry minus in pw so. no maybe i yeah okay in this uh, i think is uh, already done because the pw is uh, Done. Okay, here I open also and 
contained in uh, okay air sync the output from uh, from HPC Okay, now we will check the output of FCF. Okay, only stay only three, three seconds. Okay, converge in 10 iteration. Here you can see the, the energy, the total energy. So, okay, the, the output is converged. Now from here, we can move on turbo. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now we have the the output of the PW. So we have the ground state in the in the output and converge. You can see the highest or the highest occupied and the lowest unoccupied level. So in an electron volt in EV here you see the the homo state and the luma state okay in the independent uh, particle approximation like uh, so before the energy of the excitation is the difference of the eigenvalues so the the energy gap is the difference between luma and homo so in, in this case five point uh, one EV. Okay, now go to run Turbo Davidson with the with the independent particle approximation. Now check the the Turbo Davidson input. Okay, this flag. If the FT spectrum equal to in default is false. When uh, you put uh, true, activate uh, switch on the independent particle approximation. Not now we can uh, we run with the um, independent particle approximation. This uh, is an, an obsolete uh, variable for this case. In the next version, we, you didn't use this um, this variable. But okay, this is not important for now. Now go to run the uh, the turbo Davidson. So we can do the same. Okay. Not the I run. Now we use turbo Davidson dot x. In with the independent particle approximation, the, the the this computer is very fast, so I think it is already done. Maybe I have I haven't updated the now check. Maybe I haven't Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, I'm wrong, sorry. <laughs> I already introduced the, I didn't ever think the, the, the Turbo Davidson input. So I already run the, with the, the inter, with the interaction part. So maybe we, I have to, to maybe it's already finished because it's not, sorry. Yeah, because take two minutes with the interaction. <laughs> Maybe I can do a remote. Okay, it's finished. So, sorry, I re-update. Okay, now maybe use update. Maybe I'm wrong something. Again. Okay, uh, I'm oh. ah, okay, I don't know how to change the input file in a Oscar, but can you edit directly on the cluster, the input file? Yeah, I can uh, edit here. No, 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 I, because in the, I, I tested the, now maybe. Okay, now I update on the cluster there. And you have to update the, the file. So. Okay, now take the output from
this is the output of uh, Turbo Davidson. So, so you can see it, it, it very fast with the independent uh, particle approximation. And here you can see the couple of excitation with the number of uh, occupied state and number of the virtual state. This is the, uh, the difference of energy of the eigenvalues in the Richberg energy. And this uh, is the state that the, the Turbo Davidson computer. Now go to uh, compute the, oh no, go to, now go to the, the post processing steps. Uh, so you can, we have to use uh, Turbo Spectrum to compute the, the spectrum of benzene from this file. You can, uh, the Turbo Davidson create also the eigenvalue file that you can see in the, you can see in the, in the HPC, you can see the file that the Turbo Davidson create. Turbo Davidson create this, this output and the eigenvalues file. This, you have the difference of the energy in the So, go to see the Turbo Spectrum file. You can see also this uh, prefix out here is the, is the same for quantum exploration for PW. This here you can see that the method that you have to 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 use to to compute the spectrum. You can use a Davidson lanterns and so on. Maybe check from the okay. Here start and end. You can see the the energy of the the spectrum that you want to plot. The increment is the distance from point by point that you can plot the, the spectrum the frequency. Epsilon is the Lorentzian broadening because you can you plot the, the spectrum, the Turbo, uh, Turbo Davidson compute a, a root spectrum, but you uh, you can uh, broaden the the, the, the the root spectrum with the Lorentzian and the epsilon is the broadening uh, of this uh, Lorentzian. And this is the file that you, when where uh, turbo spectrum take the eigenvalues. Okay, run the turbo spectrum maybe before I update the file on HPC. Uh, Turbo Spectrum you can uh, run also in uh, in uh, your lab because it's uh, it's very fast. But to don't uh, take everything from the from the HPC and run on on the cluster. Okay. Turbo spectrum dot x if I can open another two 
properties. Okay, now the turbo spectrum create an output. Here is only read read the file and it's okay. If uh, print some error, if uh, there are some error, and also this uh, this file that contains the data you can use to plot the, the spectrum. This is the spectrum. You can see you have the, the energy and the intensity of the spectrum. So you can plot this and this is the, the three components of the spectrum. Okay, now take uh, take this file from the from the from the cluster. So I'll take uh, from HPC. Okay, no. Okay, and now we can use this file to, to use the plot skeleton to plot the, the spectrum with the GNU plot. So open GNU plot dot, uh, I don't know. Okay, the, the GNU plot created this file. And so here you can see the spectrum. Now check it. Okay, you can see the energy of the first excitation at 5.1 mV. The same difference that you, we can see from uh, the PW output. If you want to see the, the script of uh, of GNU plot, you can uh, change uh, uh, more stuff from X range, uh, Y range, uh, and so on. This is the peaks, uh, the, um, the label of X and Y axis, and the titles of partition. This is uh, GNU plot stuff. Now, this is the independent particle approximation. Now, move on to switch on the, the, the interaction. So, we can, we have to modify the turbo Davidson dot X input. We introduce all of this stuff. So, put, first of all, put false if the FT spectrum. So now switch on the, um, the interaction. Num end is the uh, number of eigenvalues that uh, we compute. How, uh, how um, you said before this morning, Casida uh, formulation is good to extract a, a few number of roots. So if you increase this number, the computer, the, the expand, the, 
the calculation uh, increase uh, the, the, the the exam and the expensive uh, become expen very expensive to extract more and more loops. Uh, this is the number of the initial vector. This new init, the default is double of uh, uh, the eigenvalues that you compute. Uh, this is the maximum number of basis for the sub basis. So uh, is uh, to use to check the memory that uh, Turbo Davidson use for compute this, this calculation. This is the convergent threshold. This is the minimum and maximum values of, of uh, frequency that uh, you can plot uh, in spectrum. It's similar to the also, the name is uh, identical to the turbo spectrum uh, and um, uh, flags. So, start, finish, step, epsilon become broadening, and uh, reference is, uh, is the, the value you can expect the, the, the the peak, so you can extract the 15 again values near to this value. Okay, now go to modify the input, uh, the Turbo Davidson input. I take from from the read file. You can take all stuff here to no. uh, Turbo Davidson last year. Okay. Num init is the same. Okay. Ah, so it is not necessary rerun PW. If you save the TMPD from PW, is you can use uh, the same. So now I have updated the, the, the Turbo Davidson input. So I sync to, to HPC. Okay, and now remote MPI run. Okay, now I have to wait two minutes. If uh, 
there are some questions maybe we can use this time. Oscar, there is a question on uh, YouTube. Oh, okay. No. I can, do you want me to read it? Yeah, yeah. So the question is, uh, any particular criteria or limits for a number of eigenvalues to be calculated in step one apart from computational cost? Uh, for with the uh, independent particles approximation or with the uh, interaction? Because I think uh, depend on the system, the number of uh, eigenvalues that you can uh, uh, compute with the turbo delta. So more uh, large is, uh, is uh, your system, uh, more ex expensive is extract a number of eigenvalues that you need. Because maybe in benzene, the first excitation is also the highest intensity excitation in this case. But in other case, maybe you have to extract 30, 30 excitation with a, a little intensity, and maybe the 31 is the highest intensity. So depend on from, <laughs> for the system, the, the how many eigenvalues you have to you have to extract. So in the in independent particles approximation, it, it's it, it, it's very uh, economic stuff uh, <laughs> and a lot of number of behaviors. But yeah. Oscar, there is another question uh, in the chat of Zoom. Uh, so it's written, I think the reference tag was missing in the modified input file. Does it matter? Will it find the peaks anyway in this case? Uh, in this case, it is not, uh, don't change, uh, it's, don't worry because, okay, in this case, uh, I extract the, the, the lowest, uh, uh, the lowest uh, excitation. So in this case, it's not uh, necessary. Yeah, so if you don't specify a reference, it means it's zero by default. Yeah. So the, the, the will... lowest uh, yeah. excitation. Okay, I finish. So I take from the... from the HPC, the output. You can see the data. Mm. No. Okay. Okay. Now take two minutes. No. So the difference between independent particles approximation two seconds to with the interaction two minutes. So you understand the, the difference. Okay, here you can see all every excitation, every 15 excitation. I want to show you the so here you can see the convergence iteration. The, there is an iteration. So okay. So the Davidson diagonalization has been uh, finished in twenty nine steps. The Current uh, basis set is 42, then uh, the total uh, basis that build in this run is uh, 3061. Okay. And then you can see 
every exit every 15 excitation. So now go to modify the turbo spectrum. Uh, um, the turbo spectrum input because also we have two ah yeah i have here if you check before the turbo davidson create benzene dft again file no so because uh, we can we have to set true if the FT spectrum, no? Now create all, only benzene dot again values. Uh, five. So we have to modify the turbo spectrum and say it uh, read this file, not this one. Okay. So we have to this and I think so let's do I think ah. okay We run turbo spectrum. And create now this one, benzene plot. Okay, so copy from. Uh, From, uh, from HPC, the dot that file. Okay, now I have the that file to plot with the GNU plot, but I have we have to modify also the script of um, of GNU plot we have to introduce this uh, we have to modify the last uh, the last line of uh, of um, of script uh, of uh, for uh, for GNU plot so i have Okay, and then uh, uh, it's better reduce the the highest uh, value for Y range because the intensity is uh, is lower, so you can see the the peak uh, with uh, one hundred or why uh no plot ah, it's a little bit <laughs> so maybe we can uh, reduce uh, <laughs> more the 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 wire ends okay you can see that here the the blue peak with the interaction the, the red one is uh, independent particles and approximation and blue one is with the uh, interaction in uh, compute with the interaction terms okay so Okay, you see the also the shift the uh, the blue shift 
and uh, decrease of the intensity of the the intensity of the, this peak. Now uh, a little bit later, so I'm on faster, I think. Okay, now uh, we move to the example two with uh, we use uh, turbulence program that Yuri before uh, said before this morning turbo lenses do doesn't need the, the the empty state and uh, to to compute the the spectrum and also we, we compute all spectrum one uh, a single calculation uh, this is the the equation that you represent this morning so i'm leaving this uh, this uh, this step go to the directly in the example so first of all everything we have we have to compute the pw now there isn't NBND flag in the PW input because we didn't need the, the virtual state. So we compute only occupied states. Okay, move on to uh, yeah. this one. Okay, to example two. You check the reason and the and the flux. So run. Yeah, I run. Okay. Okay, the second step after run PW is run Turbolanchos uh, program. This is the input of the Turbolanchos input. So you can see but this uh, LR input is the same for Turbodex and then the other code with the prefix uh, out there. This two is important. This is the restart step. This is 100. Every 100 iteration, the code print a restart. So if uh, something, the, the, the program kill after 250 iteration, you have safe, you have safe 200 iteration so you haven't lost everything okay so every 100 iteration the the program printer restart file and this restart files is uh, when uh, when you want to restart from a, an older file you can put a true and restart from the last iteration that you uh, compute in the other control, the iter max is the number of Lanzos iteration that you compute now, and then a pole is the polarization direction. So you can, in this case, we compute the x uh, direction, but also with two is the y direction and three is the direction. So uh, go. see this is the same so go to run uh, maybe i think it's already finished the pw yeah okay now go to run the turbulence shows yeah okay the turbulence shows code so remote and i run turbo so, 
ところになるんでしょうか。So also this uh, step uh, takes uh, a few minutes, I think. Okay, but I can show you from I can show you the output. This you can see every iteration, iteration, every Lanchos iteration. So for every iteration, print uh, an alpha coefficient is the diagonal one that uh, Yuri show you is every uh, is zero. You know this is the diagonal. This is the beta and gamma. So this is the three diagonal the coefficient of the three diagonal matrix. So you can see every iteration uh, the turbo lanchos print alpha, alpha, beta, and gamma. And this is Z. So this is for the, to compute the, the spectrum. So now the turbo spectrum read this coefficient and compute the spectrum. So maybe ah, the job is done. So compute 500 iteration of for benzene. Now, uh, okay. Now go to turbo spectrum. Okay. Spectrum. Okay. Okay. We can see prefix and now they're the same or uh, before. Okay. This is, is iter max zero is the number of excitation that you use to compute the spectrum. So we compute. 500 iteration here we put 500 iteration but also you can put a less of uh, but not more than uh, the than an iteration that you compute intermax is another number for the iteration in this case is the same of the intermax zero because we now don't use the extrapolation but then we introduce the extrapolation so this these values can increase epsil is the same for the turbo Davidson so is the broadening of the Lorentzian start and then is the value of the range of the spectrum that you compute the increment is difference point by point for the spectrum and the pole is the direction that you compute so we computed the x direction so here you have to put uh, the x direction if you put uh, two or three the, the, the calculation graph that uh, the uh, compare the uh, an error okay run This turbo spectrum. Okay, also in this case, turbo spectrum create turbo spectrum output to show error or something. Uh, 
and the, this file dot that. So we copy from uh, HPC this file and block with the GNU dot. Okay, so we can select the plot spectrum. So you can see the X range of the benzene. This is the file that you read. Okay, so. Okay, this is the spectrum that we compute with 500 iteration. Ah, you can see we have all spectrum with one calculation. So this is the, 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 the pro of the, of the turbo lanzos. You compute all spectrum by one, one computation. Now, we uh, had a struct only 500 iteration. There are possible that uh, you um oh, this is okay then that i said before intermax is 500 so you have to use uh, intermax zero 500 and this is without extrapolation also you can uh, compute uh, a more iteration so from 500 to 1000 to 1500 Maybe you can try alone this because the time is not uh, okay for me. But uh, important thing, you use restart true. So now you have computer 500 iteration. So if you put here true, restart equal true, the computer starts from 500, not from zero. So you can put here 1000 or 1500 restart to so compute from 501 to 1000 to 1500 uh, iteration okay and here you can see the the difference from 500 to 1000 to 1500 iteration okay that, uh, um, like um, Yuri uh, showed before in this morning, this spectra is not really converged. So you can see the, the spike, no? the peak, very, uh, with very spikes. So this is not converged. So you can uh, compute more and more interaction until the convergence of the spectrum. Or you can use uh, a trick uh, in the four turbo lanzos. Now here you can see the, the coefficient lanzos that, that I showed before in the output of lanzos. No, every iteration you have alpha, beta, and gamma coefficient of the triagonal uh, three diagonal matrix here is the plot of the of the beta coefficient you can see beta okay here there are two different types this is the odd one and this is the even one so you can see the coefficient is around of the half of the kinetic uh, energy at all and put 30 uh, the 
around uh, 50 Rydberg, okay, in this case. But you can see that uh, coefficient uh, after a, a start point, we can see it's change more, then uh, is uh, almost the same, no? Is uh, almost a, a plateau, no? So we can uh, use an extrapolation method to increase the number of uh, coefficients without to compute this uh, coefficient. So we compute a, a certain number of uh, coefficients. This is the, the three diagonal matrix that we compute. Now I compute 500 uh, coefficients, no? And we, we use the extrapolation to increase the number of, of uh, the, the number of coefficients. The coefficient that we extrapolate is the average of the beta and gamma coefficient that I compute. So more coefficient you can compute more good is the coefficient that you can extrapolate so but with the, the increase of the number of, uh, of the coefficient the the spectrum converge uh, uh, converge faster so you can this uh, trick is very good to to um, obtain the converged spectrum without computer every a thousand and thousand and thousand on number of uh, coefficients. Now we can try to use the extrapolation. Ah, and this is uh, everything a post processing step. So it's very it is not expensive. No, is that is almost cost zero. No, we now want to put here twenty thousand. Okay, and this is uh, extrapolation that uh, we can uh, we use. Now, I think for the spectrum, okay. Okay, now take the new uh, the new block. And go to see the This is spectrum. Okay. This is the spectrum with extrapolation. So you can see is is totally different from before. Okay, this now down here, but you can see the the real difference from the, the last one I didn't hear, but maybe in the in the PDF is so you can see here that the 
the spectrum with the extrapolation. So you can see uh, here the, uh, in red the 500 uh, iteration with extrapolation that I compute, and then 1000 iteration with extrapolation and 1500 iteration with extrapolation. And you can see the convergence of the spectrum. So the extrapolation is a powerful tool to to arrive to the convergence spectrum without extract many, many, many uh, coefficients uh, from uh, the turbo lunges. Okay, I'm a little bit later. This, uh, the, I, if there are some question for this part before I give it to, to Yuri, the, the second part. So, so there are some questions on Slack and on YouTube, but most of them are answered. I think yeah. there are no open yes. questions. Yes. But if someone has some questions, please, uh, you can raise your hand. Okay, maybe if not, we can move on. Okay, uh, thank you. And if you want to add me to create for me a breakout room, so maybe I can uh, help the tutor to, I don't know, okay, see you. Thank you, thank you very much, Oscar. Uh, um, stop there. Thank you, Oscar, thank you very much. Hello again to everybody. Uh, okay, so we did a half of the hands-on. Now we are uh, going to do the second half of the hands-on. Uh, I showed this slide from the lecture just to uh, summarize the first half with Oscar. So now you just uh, saw how to use Turbo uh, Lanxus and Turbo Davidson to compute optical absorption spectra in molecules using these two methods at the bottom, Liouville Langsos method and Casida Davidson. In the second part, we will uh, study solids instead of molecules. So no molecules any longer. So we study solids and we study different spectroscopy, which is electron energy loss. And we will do that using two methods. Uh, first one is Liouville Langsos again. So this is very powerful, can be used uh, for molecules, solids, and different spectroscopies. And second one, uh, the Steinheimer method, which was, was not discussed by Oscar so far. Okay, so let me switch to another slides. We have two remaining uh, exercises. First one uh, using the turbo yields code with the Langsos algorithm for silicon and then again, turbo yields code with the Steinheimer algorithm and again for silicon. By the way, Steinheimer, uh, Steinheimer algorithm was implemented by Oscar. Okay, this is the uh, recap from the lecture. Uh, maybe we can switch, uh, skip it in the interest of time. Just in, in red box, we highlight interaction terms, which are included. We don't do approximation uh, uh, independent particle approximation that Oscar showed for molecules. So we directly go to the complicated, fully interacting case. So red term is included. And in green, we highlight the perturbation, which is in this case is the uh, beam of electrons. So we irradiate the chunk of silicon by electrons, beam of electrons. While Oscar was discussing, you take a molecule and you shed light on your molecule. So it's different things. What we want to compute using the turbo yields code is chi of Q and omega, which is the susceptibility. Because when we compute chi, we take the imaginary part uh, multiplied by this uh, normalization factor. 
and we obtain the minus imaginary part of epsilon minus one, which is the inverse dielectric function, which can be directly compared with uh, what experimentalists measure. Okay, so we use a Langsus algorithm, the PW input for silicon, you are already experts with the input files for the PW.x code. We will use a quite dense K point grid shifted 10 by 10 by 10 and 111, which means it's shifted. And uh, after running the PW calculation, we run the turbo eels calculation. Uh, let me describe immediately the input for the turbo eels code. Uh, this input looks quite similar to the one Oscar just showed for, um, again, using the turbo Langsos code. We have prefix output directory, which is the same as in PW. Restart, keywords the same, you just learn how to use them. Now in uh, LR control name list, there are a few things which are uh, new. So we still have this iter max variable, which is the number of Langsus iterations as before. So, and we also do 500 iterations. Uh, there is a new keyword, which is called calculator. Uh, it can have two values. One is Langsus, which means we use Langsus algorithm. And second, uh, Steinheimer, we use Steinheimer algorithm. So now we use Langsus and uh, another three variables are Q1, Q2, Q3. Uh, which are the three components of the Q vector. I recall that the Q vector is the so-called transferred momentum because when the electron is scattered in a chunk of silicon, this electron loses energy and it loses the momentum. So Q is the amount of the momentum which was lost due to the sca inelastic scattering. And so we have three components in Cartesian coordinates in units to pi over a. So let's discuss in more detail how to specify the Q vector. It's on the next slide. So Q vector, bold Q, is, uh, has three components, Q1, Q2, Q3, and it's in units of two pi divided by A0, where A0 is the lattice parameter. In the case of silicon, this is controlled by cell DM1, which is 10.26 bar. For example, Let's say we want to, I mean, we find some paper in the literature where some people computed electron energy loss, electron energy loss spectrum for silicon. They show the spectrum and they write that modulus of Q is 0 0.53 bar to the power minus one. And they say that Q is along one zero zero direction in the brilliant zone. We say, okay, I want to do the same calculation. So how do I specify it in turbo yields code? So we do it the following way. We remember uh, the formula on the top and we know that the modulus of Q is 0 0.53. Since it's along one zero zero direction, we know that Q2 is zero and Q3 is zero. So only Q1 is not zero. So we know the modulus of Q, we know A0, and we can compute Q1, which is easy. So Q1 is modulus of Q multiplied by A0 divided by two pi. If we do the math, we obtain 0 0.866. So this is why in the input, we have 0 0.866, 0 and 0. Okay. And this is the third step. Um, okay. Let me describe the third step and we do the calculation. The third step is the post-processing step uh, using the turbospectrum.x program, which uh, Oscar already discussed before. Uh, we have as usual prefix and output directory. We need to activate the keyword ELS equals to true to tell to the, this program that we are using now turbo ELS code, not uh, turbo lances. So, the code will be aware that we are using ill spectroscopy. So it will do some um, read, read of, of temporary files properly. We have ethermax zero and ethermax that Oscar described. Uh, we, we can use the same extrapolation technique or not as Oscar described. For the time being, let's say we don't use extrapolation. So ethermax zero and ethermax are 500. Why 500? Because 
in the turbo eels, it was also 500. So we keep the same number. And then we have broadening epsilon 0 0.035 Rydberg units. Uh, it can be different units, Rydberg electron volts. We use one which corresponds to electron volts for the energy uh, plot, energy spectrum plot. And we say start uh, for the energy end and increment step also in electron volts. Okay, so now let's do these three steps. So we go to uh, example three and uh, we do uh, calculations using the cluster to make it faster. Type remote MPI run pw.x read the input okay we use 20 cores oops let's monitor the execution of the program okay it's finished it was fast this is good. Now let's run the second uh, step using the Turbo Eels program. So we do we type remote MPI run the name of the program, which is Turbo underscore Eels dot X, and read the input Turbo Eels for silicon. And let's monitor the execution of the program. Okay, it's running. It should take uh, maybe a few minutes. We need to wait. Okay, let's let's make it uh, do its job. And while waiting, I, I hope I'm not too fast. Okay, let's, uh, while waiting, let me comment on what we are going to obtain. So after the, these three steps, we will obtain a file containing information about uh, inverse dielectric function, epsilon to the power minus one, at a fixed Q point, or Q vector or Q point, because Q is fixed, and it will be the function of frequency omega. Of course, uh, this is a complex object. It's not a real function, it's a complex function. So we can evaluate the real and imaginary part of this function uh, using these formulas. And from the knowledge of the real and imaginary part of epsilon minus one, we can obtain also a real and imaginary part of epsilon. So epsilon minus one is the macroscopic inverse dielectric function. So to compute epsilon, we just take one divided by epsilon minus one. So these are macroscopic functions and local field effects are included in the calculation. So instead, if it was microscopic uh, matrix, so one over epsilon minus one would uh, mean that we are neglecting local field effects. But in this case, we are already computed fully epsilon minus one and it's macroscopic. Then we can divide one over epsilon minus one, it gives us epsilon. So the file that we obtain by, from Turbo Eels will have uh, information about real and imaginary of epsilon minus one and also real and imaginary parts of epsilon, which we can plot. Without extrapolation, we should obtain this figure. So on the y-axis, we have intensity of the spectrum, of the yield spectrum. And on the x-axis, we have energy. And we see there are wiggles because the spectrum is not yet converged. So let's see uh, how the calculation is running and, and if we manage to obtain the same figure. Okay, it's running. I think it should take uh, maybe five minutes. Let's wait. Meanwhile, we can, uh, we can answer some questions if there are any.
You can also ask questions from previous exercises uh, explained by Oscar. So now we will do just um, one calculation with 500 iterations. It takes uh, some time, but since we don't have time to do convergence tests by increasing number of iterations to 1,000, 1,500, etc. So you can do that when we finish the hands-on. And if you have problems, you can uh, ask questions on Slack. And as explained in the readme file, for this example three, it's uh, discussed what you have to do. So in the point five, it's written that you need to compute the ill spectrum uh, without extrapolation. So extrapolation equals no, or 500 up to 1,500 with a step 250 and compare them on one figure and then do the same steps, but this time uh, using extrapolation technique. Extrapolation equal OSC, which is uh, by constant extrapolation. You can use the restart keyword, uh, as Oscar explained, to, to speed up uh, the convergence tests, not start from zero each time. In a second note that uh, when you do these convergence studies, um, you need to change the name of the output file. So it, here it's written, uh, change the name of the input file, but actually you better not to do it because we use clusters, so there are scripts. So in order to avoid problems, uh, don't change the name of the input, but change the name of the output files. And then once you have these convergence tests, uh, you are asked the question, which conclusion can you make by comparing the results? So this is what you can do when you have some time. Okay, we can see that the calculation is finished. And now we need to do the third step, uh, the post-processing step using the Turbo Spectrum program. So let's do that, we type remote MPI run name of the program which is turbo spectrum dot x and with the input which is turbo spectrum dot silicon dot in okay this should take just a few seconds because the post if turbo yields takes let's say five minutes, this takes five seconds. And indeed it's finished. Okay, now it's time to copy files from the cluster to the local machine. But uh, on the cluster, if we connect to the cluster, we see that the program produced temporary directory locally. I mean, in this example, we do it this way, which has many files, which we don't want to copy. Um, we have output files for Turbo Eels, Turbo Spectrum, but we are interested actually in this file which was generated, which we won't just copy this file, uh, because this file contains information about real and imaginary part of epsilon and epsilon minus one. So let's remember this name and copy this to our local machine. So we just type our sync from HPC and the name of the file, which is silicon dot plot underscore apps dot dot. Okay, the file is here. Let's inspect it. Open the file. And we see a lot of information which was computed by the Turbo EOS program. 
There are five columns. The first column is the H bar omega, the energy in electron volts. Second column is the real part of one over epsilon. Third column is the minus imaginary part of one over epsilon. And last two columns are real part and imaginary part of epsilon, which I just shown on the slide. So we want to plot the ILS spectrum. So we just need the first column and the third column. So this is the, done by the script, the GNU plot script, which is plot spectrum. So you see this script plots the first column and the third column. So third column is a function of the first column. Okay, so now it's time to execute it. New plot, plot spectrum. This produces the file silicon spectrum EPS. We can visualize it. Okay, so this is the spectrum, electron angelo spectrum of bulk silicon at 500 iterations without extrapolation. If you have any problems obtaining this spectrum, please uh, let us know. So this was done with 500 iterations and you need to do it with uh, up to 1,500 in a step of 700 or within step of 250 iterations. And I recall you should use a restart option in order to save time. But what you can see, interestingly, that the spectrum converges when you increase the number of iterations. You see at 500 iterations there are unphysical oscillations. You cannot compare this to the experiment. But now when you have more and more iterations, it gets smoother and smoother. And at the end of the day with 1,500 iterations, you have a very nice, smooth, clean yield spectrum of bulk silicon, which you can compare with experiments. And remember that this was computed at a fixed K-point mesh, which is 10 by 10 by 10 shifted, one, one, one. So we, are, we need to also converge the spectrum with respect to the K-points. This is one of the next tasks. Yes, as I said before, to speed up the convergence, as we know already, we can use extrapolation technique. In this case, we can extrapolate, let's say, up to 20,000 iterations. But you can take any other number, 30,000, 50,000. Of course, the more, the better. But And it doesn't really influence the cost cost. Since calculation is very fast, it takes just it's a matter of seconds, you can uh, use a large number. But of course, there is no point going to crazy numbers like a million or something, or the order of tens of thousands should be sufficient. And as you can see, if we repeat the same step from 500 to 1,500, but this time with extrapolation to 20,000, and you see that nicely already at 500 iterations, we are converged essentially, almost. It's almost identical to the, to the black curve. So you can see really that in your real life uh, studies and applications, you should always use extrapolation technique because it allows you to compute spectrum uh, at a lower computational cost. And you can verify that this is true uh, by doing this exercise when you have some more time. Okay, this is just a comment that Turbo ILS code gives you not only the spec ILS spectrum, which is red uh, spectrum uh, with the maximum corresponding to the plasmon. I remind that plasmon is the quasi particle and plasmons are uh, actually collective excitations of electrons. So when you excite your system, uh, by beam of electrons, the electrons of silicon are excited collectively. It's not their individual excitations, but they're, they're really feeling each other and excited collectively. And if you quantize this collective excitation, the quantum of this 
uh, excitation is called plasma. It's a quasi particle. And on this figure, we plot also other quantities uh, like real part and imaginary part of epsilon. So the real part is green one. You see it can even have negative values. And imaginary part is this um, purple spectrum. So this is, it is useful to plot also the real part of epsilon, why? Because this helps us to identify where is the plasma. So the definition of the plasma is that the peak in the red spectrum occurs at the energy where real part of epsilon is zero and the slope is positive. So we have zero, but we go from the negative value to the positive value. So this happens around uh, 16 EV and the plasma is around uh, 21 EV. So it's, you see, it's not really exactly the same energy. Uh, this is because of the broadening effects. So, but more or less we can identify that, that actually this intense peak is the plasma. Okay. And by the way, just to comment, when there is also a real epsilon is zero, but with a, with a negative slope, it goes from positive to negative, you find peaks in uh, imaginary epsilon. Okay, and now we have the last example. Now uh, we have just little time left. So we have example four, which is the most complex example of the whole school. This is so because um, the implementation of the Steinheimer algorithm is very recent. As I said, uh, Oscar implemented it, I think it was last year or one year or, or more. So this is recent and of course it's not yet uh, perfect and there are optimizations that have to be done and many other improvements. This is a first version, but it's already great that we have this working because we can uh, test the idea of uh, Steinheimer uh, method, which was discussed during the lecture. So even though it's slow, but we can uh, see that this method gives exactly the same spectrum as Lanzos. So two methods are very different, but they give exactly the same spectrum. This is very interesting and we want to check that. A few uh, warnings, as, as I said, it's, com it's uh, quite expensive. We need to use HPC. Don't even uh, attempt to run it on the virtual machine with two cores, it will not work. It will crash because of disk space uh, limit and memory and everything. And also we can try even to use parallelization or key point pools with or without. Okay. Um, so this is the input we do as usual. First st step one, PW calculation. Step two, turbo yields calculation. Now we specify a calculator Steinheimer instead of Lanxus. Uh, we don't have any longer keyword iter max. So we don't have those iterations which were specific to Lanxus and we don't have a restart option yet. So for the Steinheimer, we keep the Q, uh, the coordinates of the Q vector. And then we also integrated here uh, keywords to plot, to plot the spectrum, like uh, broadening epsilon, units EV, starting and ending for the plot of the spectrum and increment. And we don't need to run turbo spectrum post-processing here. Since it's a different algorithm, we just do two steps. First, PW and second, turbo yields Steinheimer. Okay, before you start running the calculation, important notice, you need to do some preparatory step. We go to example four. And let me find, so in the readme file, yeah, it's actually in the readme file of day six. It's not inside of example four, but it's general of day six. There is a note written here. 
you need to do git stash, git pull, git uh, stash apply, then close the terminal and open a new terminal and start doing the this exercise for. So you did already something perhaps, but just to make sure that you, you did really exactly these same steps. So you need to apply, uh, download the latest version of the material. And importantly, you need to close the terminal because when you open a new terminal, it will apply the, the important changes which are done underneath. So this is a important update. So once this is done, you are ready to go. In example four, we run the PW calculation, which is taking a few seconds. Remote MPI run PW.x minus input PW. Okay, let's check. Okay, it's finished. And the final step, submitting Turbo Eels calculation with the Steinheimer algorithm. So we type remote SQ, oh, sorry, uh, remote MPI run, Turbo Eels.x. Oops. And Turbo Eels. Steinheimer remote MPI run for remote SQ. Okay, so it's running. So note that this calculation will take two, two hours using 20 cores. As I told you, this is very expensive because the code is not yet uh, optimized. So of course, this is in our plans to optimize it, make much faster, make, uh, make it much more efficient. But just as a proof of concept, we can use this uh, implementation to compare with Langsus algorithm. So I don't recommend to use a Steinheimer algorithm for production purposes. You should rather use a Langsus algorithm with Turboil's code. If you face any issues, uh, please post your questions on Slack. But if uh, it doesn't work, don't worry, because of course it's a very complicated example. But if you really want to, to, to make it successful and complete it successfully, then we are uh, available on Slack to discuss. So it will take two hours, but let me show you the final result. This is the, the, the spectrum, ill spectrum of bulk silicon computed using Langsus, the blue line, which we just uh, uh, discussed in example three. So this is the converged one, the blue one, using 500 steps with extrapolation. And red dots, red circles, are the one which we are computing now using Steinheimer. But you can see the two spectra are really on top of each other. But Langsus is more computationally efficient algorithm because as Oscar said, we, we need to do just one Langsus uh, calculation. It doesn't depend on frequency. So all frequencies are done in one shot. So we see we can have as a accurate step as what we want in the frequency. While with Steinheimer, we need to do each calculation for each frequency. That's why we have the discrete number of points. We computed just 31 points because each point is a separate calculation. It's a very expensive calculation. So if you want to have a denser, uh, denser uh, spectrum, like smaller distance between points, so you have more calculations to do, so more computational cost. While for Langsus, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can expand to 100 TV or, or as, as large as you want at no cost. Just, I mean, you need to keep in mind that if you go high in energy, you, 
you start um, touching uh, excitations from the core levels. So if you want to have also excitations from the core levels, you need to make sure that your pseudo potential has those uh, levels included. Typically core level, I mean, the idea of pseudo potentials not to have core levels, but uh, I was referring more to semi-core levels, like uh, deeply lying D electrons, maybe at around minus, minus 20 electron volts, minus 30, up to, up to 100. But if you are interested in the core, uh, core level spectroscopy, which is core level ELs, so this code is not uh, appropriate because this is for valence, valence uh, loss spectroscopy. We are not studying here core, core level spectroscopy. Okay, and uh, the last point, uh, convergence with respect to the K-point mesh. You can do it either with Langsus or Steinheimer, of course, so better to go for Langsus because it's way more efficient. And you see that if you use K-mesh 444, the spectrum is not smooth, not converged, but with the K-mesh 10 by 10 by 10, it's already smooth and converged. That's why we used 10 by 10 by 10. And the very last, not very last, but almost, the very last point um, is the plasma dispersion. So using Turbo Eels code, you can compute ill spectra corresponding to different wave vectors Q. For example, in this exercise, we computed spectrum for a fixed Q, which is 0 0.5 dot something. But you can do this calculation for different values of Q vector. For example, from 0 0.1 up to 1.3, you can plot them on the same figure and you can see how it changes depending on the value of the transferred momentum Q. So you see for the small transfer momentum, you have one sharp peak. And then when Q is increasing in modulus, the peak shifts to higher energies and it broadens. So this is it broadens because the energy of the plasmon, because this peak is the plasmon, collective excitation. So this energy is transferred. Uh, it, so plasmon enters in the electron hole continuum. That is to say, the energy of the plasmon is transferred to, uh, to electron and hole. So this is shown here. If you take peaks, determine peaks of spectra from, from each spectra, and you plot them, uh, the intensity, uh, the peak of each spectrum as a function of Q, you should obtain something like parabolic-like. And this is called plasmon dispersion. And as I uh, discussed before, so this parabolic like dispersion, uh, this is the plasma dispersion and the electron hole continuum is indicated by this dashed region. So when this plasma dispersion touches and then enters with a continuous with dashed line. So in this region, the energy of the plasma is lost. It's transferred to the uh, excitations of uh, electron hole pairs. And if you are interested more in this, you can, uh, read about it in this book shown below, for example. And I think uh, it's time to finish this hands-on. If you have any questions to any of four examples, please uh, ask now. So I see one question in Slack. How does the X spectra package calculate XIS spectra with pseudo potentials? So in quantum espresso, there is a another code which is called X spectra to study core uh, core level spectroscopy. For example, uh, as, I, as I just mentioned, here we are discussing about valence uh, uh, electron uh, excitations. But what if we're interested to study spectroscopy when we excite core electrons? This is described by XAS, X-ray absorption spectroscopy. And there is a code in quantum express to do that. We don't discuss it during this school. Uh, so the idea in X-ray uh, absorption spectroscopy for core, core electron excitations, we still use uh, pseudo potentials, but in that spectroscopy, what happens is that we're exciting elect core electron 
from, for example, from 1S level, which is very deep, to the lowest uh, unoccupied bands or to the Fermi level. So when we excite it, electron goes from 1S to the empty bands, but it leaves behind a core hole on the 1S level. So we need to take it into account in the calculation. But there is a problem because we're using pseudopotentials and in pseudopotentials, we don't have core levels. So what to do? So there are different ways how to compute XAS spectra. The one which is used in quantum spread so is based on the following idea that we need to uh, generate uh, special pseudopotentials that take into account the presence of the core hole. So for example, if you take a chunk of nickel, you have study bulk nickel, and you want to measure XAS spectrum in bulk nickel. So if we have, we have several nickel, we construct a supercell, and the core hole is localized on one of nickel atoms. So what we do for all nickel atom, atoms except one, we use the usual pseudopotentials. But for the one for the, just one nickel where we want the core hole to sit, we use a special pseudopotential, which is generated with the core hole. And with this, we do a DFT calculation, and on top we use X spectra code to compute uh, this spectroscopy. Okay, uh, next, how different are there uh, between chi dot dot and eels dot dot files resulting from turbo eels code? Yes, I, I haven't discussed this. Um, let me go to example three and see. So in example three, turbo yields code generated two files, silicon plot chi and silicon plot epsilon. So as you can guess, silicon plus epsilon contains all information about epsilon, the electric function and its inverse, while silicon chi contains information about chi function. Open it. We see uh, first column is the energy, second column is the real part of chi, third column is the imaginary part of chi. So what is this chi? Is the one, is the susceptibility. Uh, this one, this is chi. So as I said, Turbolangsus computes chi, and then in the post-processing step, we just apply this formula, one plus four PE squared divided by modul squared uh, modulus of Q times chi. So plot chi contains information about chi, and plot eps contains information about one, two, three, four, real imaginary part of epsilon, epsilon minus one. But typically, we are not interested in uh, chi by itself because we cannot compare chi directly to the uh, what is measured in experiments. We need to rescale it a bit to obtain epsilon minus one. So that's why actually we I didn't even mention about this file. But just in case you should know, there is another question on YouTube. Can the Lanxus calculation be used for calculating the plasmon spectrum of molecules? How accurate is it? The, the answer is yes, you can, you can try to use turbo eels for computing plasmons in molecules. Uh, I have never worked on this, but um, you, can, you can try, of course. Or maybe even uh, nanoparticles, I think. But for that, it would be useful also to, to use probably turbo lungs. Yeah. But I don't have experience uh, with plasmons in molecules. Any other questions? Also to the part described uh, the, by Oscar. So what does the peak mean in the yield spectra of silicon? So let's see. So the, this peak means, so the red spectrum is the ill spectrum and the, the peak is the plasmon. Uh, I, just, I explained before why this is plasmon because real part of epsilon is zero or 
not exactly the same energy, but nearby. Yeah, so I mean, this this uh, spectrum can be compared with experimental spectra. I mean, if you are interested in the field of plasmonics, I mean, you need you can use this uh, technology to determine plasmon spectra. Um, yes, there is also quite recent activity on uh, acoustic plasmons. So which, which are plasmons, which are uh, at lower energies, not around 20 V, but really around zero, which are, um, they have acoustic behavior, like acoustic phonons, if you want. So there are also acoustic plasmons, which are uh, in, in, in surfaces, for example. So they behave uh, linearly, they start from zero. I mean, not, this, not the spectrum, but the, the plasmon dispersion, which is shown here. So if you plot plasmon dispersion as a function of Q, it will be linear. It will start from zero and it will be linear for some time. So they are interesting for uh, some technological applications like uh, light harvesting or the like. And also if you study uh, surfaces, there are also plasmons, surface plasmons. So you can also investigate them using the turbo yields code. There are different types of surface plasmons like uh, conventional surface plasmons or acoustic uh, surface plasmons. Yeah, there is a community working on plasmonics. Maybe it's not that large, but in case some of you is interested, probably this code can be useful for your research. I think someone is typing on Slack. You can also raise your hand. We have a couple of minutes left. So there is a question on YouTube. Is there a way to extract information about the orbitals where the transition takes place? So I guess this is uh, about molecules, correct? Absorption spectroscopy in molecules. So if Oscar wants to answer, if not, I can answer. Yeah, so, uh, with uh, Kazita, uh, with the Davison, you can uh, see the initial and virtual orbitals involved in the excitation. With the launch of this, it's not possible. Because, so we use only the occupied space. Yes. The limit of the launch of some algorithm. Okay, if there are no other questions, maybe we can stop here. You can yes. ask your questions on Slack. Yuri, just one thing, thank you really much uh, from, and uh, Oscar as well from Old Organize, but this is your last lecture. So you've been giving several lectures in this school yeah. and uh, as usual, those are resulting very clear and uh, and then very, very well organized. So it's evident the effort behind it. So thanks, thanks, Yuri. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Looking forward to see you in Trieste at some point. Yeah. Uh, back Looking in Trieste. Forward. Looking forward, really. Thank you. OK, so you can we can close the session here. And we'll be back at uh, 2 30 chest. So Central European Summit time for the keynote of today.